Currently from our action methods, we are returning a string value. But that is not the proper way of specifying the return type for an action method. We already know that when the controller receives an incoming request based on the URL, an action method will be executed. And this action method will process the request and send a response back to the client. So the return type of the action method should specify what type of content the action method is going to return to the client in the response body. And the most generalized return type which we can specify for an action method is content result. So here, instead of using string, we can specify the return type as content result. Now I mentioned that this content result is the most generalized type of return type. That's because content result can be used to return any type of response to the client. We can return text slash plain content, text slash HTML content, application slash JSON content, application slash PDF content, or any type of other content using this content result type. Now when we are specifying this content result as the return type, from here, we need to return an instance of content result. So we need to say return new content result. Okay. And here we need to specify two properties for this content result. The first property will be content. So for the content, let's say the content is going to be this. And then we also need to specify the content type for that content. For that we can use this content type property and here let's say content type is text slash plain because here we are returning a text content okay and let's comment this line if we go ahead and if we run this application so here we have the response welcome from asp.net co application let me open the network tab here Let's make a request again. Okay, so here we have the request. Let's double click on that. And here you will notice that for the response header, the content type is text slash plain. And that's what we have specified here. If I change it to text slash HTML, and now if we run this application, and again, if I open the network tab, let's make a request again. And again, you will see that the response header is now textless HTML. Okay, so basically using this content type, we tell the client what type of response we are sending so that the client can process that content accordingly. For example, here, if I specify text slash plain, but let's say I want to send HTML content. So for that, I will use this H1 element here. And let me also specify the closing h1 element so here we are returning an html content but for the content type we are specifying text slash plain so the browser which is the client in our case it is going to treat this content as a plain text it is not going to treat it as an html text let me actually show you that so let's run this application again and you see instead of rendering this text as an h1 element it is rendering it as a plain text that's because currently let's go to the network tab let's make a request again and let's open this request so currently the content type is text slash plain but if i go ahead and if i change it to text slash html in that case this content will be treated as an html content so you see now that content is rendered as html as an h1 element and the content type should also be textless HTML as you can see okay so using this content result we can return any type of content from our ASP.NET Co application we just need to specify the content type for that content we can also shorten this syntax by using the content method so what we can do is we can say return content and this content is a method okay so instead of content result it should be content now in order to use this content method we need to make our home controller class inherit from controller class 
Okay, because this content method it is present inside Microsoft.asp.net code.mvc.controller class. And then to this content method, we can pass two arguments. The first argument will be the content which we want to return. So in this case, this is going to be the content which we want to return. And second, we also need to specify the content type. So here we want to return textless HTML content. Okay, let me go ahead and let me comment this. I'll keep it for your reference. Let's go ahead and let's run this application again. And our application is still working. It is still rendering that content as HTML. The only difference is that instead of instantiating this content result and then returning it, we are calling this content method. And behind the scenes, this content method is going to return an instance of content result. So if I go to definition, you will notice that this content method, it is returning a content result. Okay. So using this content method is same as instantiating a new content result class and specifying its content and content type. Now, when we inherit this controller class for our custom controller, the benefit here is that this controller class provides some built-in methods for returning different types of results which we can use. And it also provides additional information about model binding, validation status, etc. So whenever you create a new controller class, make sure that you inherit from this controller class so that you can use the features provided by this controller class in your own custom controller. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.